All right. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to copy my vector line drawing into Photoshop. So I select that, copy, and going into Photoshop, I'm going to do a new document. Use a US paper preset so I can get the 300 resolution. And I'll just change this up. Like 5 by 5. Hit OK. Paste as pixels. Something like that. Okay, so once I get my graphic in there, if I were to turn my background black, you'll see that I do indeed have that white fill of my line drawing. Now some line drawings, you won't have that white fill. Like some won't be filled, it'll just be line drawings. So really what I want to do is there's a way to get rid of the white in this situation and that's multiply. So if I select my line drawing and go to multiply, then that's going to get rid of the white. So I'm going to re-inverse my background. So basically I just turned my white fill line drawing into a transparency. Okay, It's on a transparent sheet now. So if I go below it and I create a new layer, Underneath that one, just like coloring under the black line. And that's a way we can, we can color this fairly easily. So if I go to my brush, I'll do like a, a hard edge with pressure. And again, I don't have to worry, you know, about this color going over the lines because it's it's underneath it. And if I do that, that's okay. I can just go back and just kind of clean it up by erasing. No big whoop. Switch to my eraser, hard edge. Put a pressure on it. What's the shortcut for eraser? E. As in erroneous. This is the very basic, simple way of coloring. There's another way where it involves a lot of selection, like you're selecting parts and you're inverse selecting. And let me show you that one in a bit. But obviously, I wanted to go over the easy one first.
So now you can see that, you know, it's just an underlay of color. It's its, its own layer. And I've got that filled in. Um, to do highlights, I can do a couple things. I'm going to show you uh, the selection method. So if I go back to my line drawing, I'm back on my lines, and I use my selection tool. And maybe I just want to hit parts of it. So I use my selection tool, and obviously if I'm selecting and holding shift to add another selection, I can grab these parts. So I'm just like randomly grabbing spots. Let's see, uh, maybe that. And if I go back down to my color layer, see that selection stays. So I can create a new layer and change up my color, maybe to something light, as if it was a highlight. And actually in this situation, I'm, I can just do edit fill with my foreground color. And also, that's using a selection based on my line drawing. But I can, again, go back in with the lasso tool and just hit certain spots that I want. And doing the same thing, I can actually use my paint bucket. It does the same thing for anything that's selected. I just click in one, it'll fill for all. And again, I like to keep things on separate layers so that it's easier to manage. So this highlight is on a different layer. See, I can just move that around. That's its own color set. So I have my line work, my highlights, and my base color now. So if I really wanted to, I can go in and adjust my highlights. And if I wanted to, I can go to my base color, maybe do a gradient overlay on a multiply, and I can really affect uh, that shadow area. Scale it down a bit, bring it down. Maybe not select a, a black, but go with the same type of hue, a really dark blue, so I can get a nice uh, shadow there. And then I can do another layer. Again, I, I keep everything separated. Ease of use. So I can go to a white color.
Just getting some white details in there. the hat again I can swap back kind of do you know use that selection method sometimes you have to watch out because when you when you use this selection method let's see where else do I use it on I think I used it on this and you do a fill on it sometimes it doesn't grab all the pixels it needs to like if I look right here, there was still a little bit of blue right there that I should have filled in. So there's a way to kind of fix that. And this is called trapping. If any of y'all heard of that, it's, it's really, it's when you, you take that color and, um, and it bleeds just a little bit outside that line. So that you don't necessarily have uh, a color to another color, you might get an edge of white in there. So you need to really expand that color out just a bit or expand that selection. So sometimes it's a safe thing to do is once you have an area selected, you go to select, modify, expand. And we're going to expand that selection by a certain distance. So we're going to do, um, we'll try one pixel. And you see what that did? It created almost like a bleed area, a trapping, to go around it. And that's a better way to color underneath the black line, is using that trapping. So with that selected, we go in and uh, the color here. <laughs> So that you don't get any of that white line, that hazy line in there. making a selection to do the highlight. Always want to back out to see what it looks like. Make sure I don't have too much detail. Um, so this is one style of coloring. You see I keep everything on separate layers, right? Um, it's safe. Super safe. This is like having every insurance policy available. Um, you can do other methods. Let's say you can go onto the base color. So this is the base color of that hat. I can go to dodge and burn. So if I want to do shadows, I can use the burn tool. Exactly. And let's see. Sometimes you want to do a couple passes just to see where it's at. And that's good. Um, right now it's on range of mid-tones. And each tone does something slightly different. Like highlights tend to keep things, uh, just make them dark. Shadows, you see it just gives like a different burn color. Mid-tones. That kind of has the, the correct tone that I need. And there's also this protect tone so it doesn't make it too crazy. Um, let's see, I'll go to exposure, can I bring that up a bit? Make sure, yeah, hard edge, okay.
So this is actually working on the base tone or the base color. The only thing with that is there is no insurance if you kind of mess that up. You know, it's, it's sealed with that base. Uh, but it's not a big deal. You know, it's just something you can play around with. So if I go into my base color of, let's see, well, I have a gradient overlay over that. So I probably have to do a new layer above my blue. That's fine. Just go with a darker shade. Switch back to my brush. And, you know, you don't have to use that lasso selection. Sometimes you just kind of go in and wing it. Finish up these, uh, I'm going to do the wings. So I'm going to select, shift select, not that. And let's see. I'll just hold option. Select what I don't want. Let's see. Got a new layer. I'm not going to deviate too far away from the tones that I'm picking here. I uh, forgot to do my trapping. Expand one pixel. There we go. Something like this, I can pick like a lighter color. Get back on my brush. It's something really huge here. Not that big. Let's see. Maybe like that. So I have just the inset wings here. And if I just brush down, I'm going to grab, you see how there's a little bit of highlight going on? It's kind of what I want. Exactly. And I can use that to my advantage. Um, let me bring that down underneath that base color. There we go. So I can do something like that. It's And it, you know, I can... I can just play with that. I can go back to my line drawing, select just the parts I want, go back to you know this color layer, and you know maybe change the tone up a bit on it. Go to my brush, see, and just brush those parts. You know, just change those parts.
So I could probably work on this for probably a couple hours, you know, just putting detail after detail after detail. But um, I think that's a good stopping point. Any questions? Everybody can do this now? Cool. It's just a matter of selecting the black line layer or the inside of it and then using that as your fill area. Or you could simply just put the black line on top of everything, multiply it, and do a bunch of color layers underneath. So that's without the black line. So a couple ways to do it. And then when I have it like this, I can hide the background, save that as a PNG 24 so it keeps its transparency, and put that on all types of cool stuff. All right? So I want to see what y'all can do with coloring. 